Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to a new thing I'm doing. I'm calling it Reviews at 45 RPM or Revolutions for a Minute. If you don't know what that means, they used to release these small records back in the day called 45s that were singles back before the digital age, CDs and such. And I'd be focusing mostly on ones from the 60s, some lesser known ones, some better known ones, some lesser known ones by bigger bands, some ones you've probably never heard of in your life. But I feel like the 60s was the golden age for these kind of things, and that's what I'm going to focus mainly on. So, the first episode I'm doing is going to be on the band The Yardbirds. You've probably heard about The Yardbirds before. They're famous for having Eric Clapton, Jeff Beck, and Jimmy Page in their band. Not all at the same time, although there was a brief period where Jimmy Page and Jeff Beck were in the same band, in the band at the same time. But I'm going to talk about the single Happenings 10 years time ago. Released October 21st, 1966 in the UK, and not until November 4th, I believe, yeah, in the US. So, this had come right after, this single had come right after their album, Roger the Engineer, in 1966. After that album, Paul Samuel Smith, their bassist, left the band to pursue record engineering um, production things like that and he was replaced by Jimmy Page studio musician Jimmy Page who previously had been on things like Baby Please Don't Go by Them You Really Got Me by The Kinks apparently he was on I Can't Explain by The Who though Pete Townsend insists that he played the solo not Jimmy Page but who knows for sure so they hired him to play bass of all things and after a while, they realized what they had. They had Jimmy Page and Jeff Beck in the same band. So rhythm guitar player Chris Drasia switched over to bass, leaving Jimmy Page and Jeff Beck as a dual guitar thing, which is crazy. And they only actually recorded a few songs like this. And this song, Happenings 10 Years Time Ago, that I'm talking about, is one of them. Now, John Paul Jones, Chris Drasia actually didn't play bass on this track. John Paul Jones did, who ended up in Led Zeppelin, which is a band that evolved from the Yardbirds. So, um, he pre John Paul Jones had previous previously worked with Jeff Beck and Jimmy Page on Jeff Beck's single, Beck's Bolero, earlier that year, I believe. And so they knew each other pretty well. It's kind of an early Led Zeppelin get-together kind of thing with Page and John Paul Jones. The song only reached number 30 in the U.S. and 43 in the U.K. And it was, it was, that single was the end of six, I believe six top 20 singles in the U.K. and the U.S. So that was a big deal that this didn't do as well. It was an extremely experimental song. Uh, rock was going in that direction at the time. Um, earlier that year, Revolver by the Beatles had been released. Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys. Fifth Dimension by the Birds. There was a whole lot of experimentation going on in rock at the time, and the Yardbirds were part of it. And what can I say about this song? This song is, to me, is a masterpiece. I can see why it didn't sell as well. It's kind of, I can imagine at the time it was pretty jarring for a lot of the record listening audience at the time. But it's just, it's a groundbreaking achievement. It's considered a groundbreaking achievement. And it's, it's psychedelic rock. One of the best psychedelic rock songs I've ever heard. And that's saying a lot because there was a lot of good stuff like that at the time. Uh, lots of special effects. It has a Middle Eastern style guitar riff. There's a part in the middle, which is pretty much a guitar explosion between Jimmy Page and Jeff Beck. And there's a siren. There's a, he plays the guitar. I think it's Jimmy Page in this part. He plays the guitar 
and it sounds like a siren, and it goes into a crazy guitar solo with Keith Ralph, the vocalist, just doing some weird spoken word over it. It's, it's pretty mind-blowing. It's so great. Um, Keith Ralph, the singer, his voice sounds pretty haunting in the song. I'm not really sure what the song exactly is about. I know it says happenings 10 years time ago. I'm assuming he's reflecting to 10 years time ago, but the song is so strange, it's hard to say exactly what it's about. Uh, the song is widely considered uh, an early prototype of heavy metal, which makes sense, seeing how this band eventually evolved into Led Zeppelin. Um, just a great, great song. Uh, I don't know what else I could say about this song. It's just crazy. The only, like I said, they only did a few songs with uh, having Jeff Beck and Jimmy Page. And, man, this is pretty much the Yardbirds crowning achievement, in my opinion. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about the B-sides a little bit. There's only two of them. I mean, only two of them. There's two of them. Usually there's one B-side. There's two of them. Because... The UK and the US each had a different B-side. Now in the UK, uh, the B-side was Psycho Daisies, um, featuring Jeff Beck on vocals, who only did vocals for a few of their songs. So, yeah, it didn't happen very often. The song mentions a lot of US places. It came, I think he wrote it, they wrote it while they were on tour of the US, which was, they were still having a, a good amount of success tour in the US at the time. And it mentions the actress Mary Hughes, who actually had an affair with Jeff Beck. It, the song's only a minute and 51 seconds. It's pretty short. And this is the pre-page lineup. This was recorded before Jimmy Page had joined the band, so they just used this and recycled it over to the B-side of this song. But it's a really good song. It's not nowhere near happening 10 years time ago. But it's a good song. It's a good B-side. So in the U.S., the B-side was a song called The Nazar Blue, which was another song sung by Jeff Beck. It's it's an enjoyable song. It has a, a blues melody to it, a often used blues melody. You've heard this melody in a lot of blues songs. They did that sometimes. The chord progression is pretty familiar. Um, this song was actually also on the album Roger the Engineer, and it features the pre-page lineup. Now, the, the American version of the album, Roger the Engineer, was called Over, Under, Sideways, Down. They named it after the single from the album, Over, Under, Sideways, Down. And this did not feature the Nazar Blue, because they used it for the single for Happening Sunday's Time Ago. So that's the first episode of Reviews at 45 RPM. I hope you enjoyed it. I can be talking about lots of interesting and different songs. Some you probably know well, some you've probably never heard of. So, yeah, check this out. The Arvids are a great band. Can't say enough about this song. It's just, it's incredible. So, yeah, have a great day, everybody. And I'll see you next time.